Okay, we're recording. Hey, everyone, it's Gordon Einstein, your friendly local Dubai crypto and blockchain attorney, continuing my series of intimate, hard-hitting talks with people that are awesome. Uh, today, I'm very happy to, to welcome, and I'm going to see if I pronounce his last name correctly, Adrian Nikoscu. Is that right? It's uh, perfect. Nicolescu is perfect. Nicolescu. It's a pure okay, Romanian name. <laughs> right, exactly. M Mr. Romania. You know what? And I've been to Romania, and it's awesome. And I like Romanian people. And the language is interesting because it's, it's not Eastern European per se. It's kind of Italian when you hear it. So it's, it's a it's almost like a Mediterranean language. So Adrian, thank you for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. How are you doing today? Thank you very much, Gordon, for the invitation. Uh, in our circles, uh, people call you the, the famous uh, blockchain uh, lawyer, right? This is uh, the... Uh, um, uh, what, what they put near your name. So uh, I'm very grateful to be part of your show, right? Mm -hmm. And um, uh, also uh, to be part of your network, you know, because one of uh, the principles um, uh, I understood some years ago is that your network equal your net worth. Yes. And it's not, it's not about financials. It's also about financial, right? But... Um, it it helps a lot to be surrounded by like-minded people because we all have ups and downs. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, fortunately, uh, what we have in Dubai is the community. Usually when, when people meet, uh, they start, you know, so the relationships are very warm. I was in Dubai for the first time in 2005 and 2006. Oh, wow. 20 years ago, practically. Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. I was part of an uh, early uh, uh, delegation from the Ministry of Communication from Romania. Uh, I came at JITEX. Okay, back sure. In that day, it, it was like an, uh, a, a stand of Romanian companies. Uh, it was everything paid... Uh, uh, the exhibition was paid by the the state, and uh, also we received like a sponsorship for uh, half of the accommodation and uh, travel cost. Mm -hmm. Back then was only Burj Al Arab, you know, and some uh, some malls. Sure. But um, uh, I was uh, I was uh, somehow very attracted to. Uh, the, the 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 vibe in Dubai, you know, it it was something very, uh, let's say, uh, um, uh, my heart was touched, you know, so I felt at home, somehow, you know, and at the okay. beginning of uh, 2017, I I, wa I wanted to start with that uh, before introducing myself because it, it it's important for the 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 vibe we are feeling in in Dubai and. Uh, uh, I would like everybody to feel that because. Well, here, let, let, let me let me just ask you a couple of things real fast. You 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 would you, would you say that you're you're we'll go into your background in a second, but would you say that you're just kind of split or living both between Romania and the UAE right now? Is is that accurate or? Yes, yes, yes. In two thousand, at the beginning of two thousand seventeen, uh, uh, I spoke at the first uh, uh, conference in Dubai. It was a blockchain uh, uh, conference. And uh, uh, I've started to be very, very uh, close to what's happening in Dubai during the, the pandemic when Dubai remained open. Mm -hmm. And after that, of course, uh, 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 became a resident. And uh, it was a very proud moment for me uh, to, uh, to, to do like that. You. And, uh, and um, um, because I also have a, a base in, uh, in Romania, I do a lot of uh, back and forth, and I I try to spend as much time uh, possible in uh, in uh, Dubai, for so many reasons. Not necessarily uh, only about uh, business, but w when I'm in Dubai, um, looking at all the things, all the buildings, all the uh, technology, and everything, uh, and even when uh, uh, driving on Sheikh Zayed Road. <laughs> mm -hmm. S some somehow I'm I feel that uh, uh, I'm um, uh, overcoming my limiting beliefs, you know. Yes, yeah, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. If they if they did this, 
so quickly and well, how we're in no position to complain about anything, right? Exactly, exactly. Because it's, it's like the desert. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and uh, uh, I like to have these uh, types of experiences and especially, uh, let's say, when when uh, you are working on a project and when you, let's say, when you work a lot, when you have like uh, down moments, we, we all have that. It's very important, as I said before, to be surrounded by like-minded people and also to be in an environment where you feel that you are uh, supported, you know? Yes. Everywhere where you look around, you have this feeling that everything is safe, uh, people are nice, everybody is, is polite, there is a certain culture, and uh, you can uh, you can uh, text uh, uh, on WhatsApp, you say people from, uh, from uh, your circle, and uh, immediately you, you, you get a feedback, you know, usually a positive one. Yes. So it's 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 very good because it's very important for your state of mind and uh, we as uh, as entrepreneurs as investors we we hit a lot of walls in everything we are doing you know and sometimes we have like scratches wounds so we we need this type of uh, uh, being part of a supporting community you know it's, it's, it's not like you've been through a lot my experience Interesting. Adrian, let me, we're going to, we're going to dive into all this, but I, I want to sort of set the table for the show. So Please. you're, you've done a lot and you've been a lot of different places, but I, I, I think what would be a initial, let's say for the first show, I think what would be of interest to the audience is your marketing background, because you, you I think you have, if I understood you correctly, you have specific expertise when it comes to marketing and community building for crypto and blockchain projects is is that correct yes yes okay great and then the my experience as a lawyer and an advisor but not a marketing person is that projects sort of live or die by their ability to create a community to get adoption to get people to experiment with them because there's so many projects out there you can have the best project or, you know, if it's the L1 blockchain, for example, you can have the best technology in the world. But if people don't know about it, if they're not using about it, if they're not experimenting, to your point, responding when you have something new and, and answering your queries, you don't get anywhere. So, and if I, if I, you know, you and I talked a little bit before we started recording the show, and it, it sounds like you're bringing this marketing expertise to bear on many projects. You, I think you said you're advising 15 right now. And yes, I'm with. I'm advisor in about 15 projects, plus uh, the, the the projects I'm uh, I'm serving uh, as uh, simple clients. I would say simple clients, regular clients. Okay, In interesting. So what I what I want to do is I want to get a sort of your back uh, briefly get your background. You know where you're from. I mean I know where many of it, like the details. What you studied, and then I want to get your path to blockchain and crypto, and then I want to really hone in on your experience and it's okay to talk about your personal experience we talk about your experience with marketing and also see if we can extract some lessons or some guidance for the people watching the show so they can go you know when this is all over they can be like oh that's a great idea either do themselves or contact you or something so let, let, let's just start at the beginning where were you born uh, i was born in uh, bucharest uh, romania and, beautiful city uh, Yes, yes, and uh, my my childhood was uh, during the the the, the communist uh, era. Our our, our our buddy Chase Hescal. Yeah, 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 yes. But nice, uh, nice have... guy. Him and his wife. Right. <laughs> I don't want. To, I don't want to 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 comment on that. Okay. Um, fortunately, um, um, I had. Um, a, a very nice uh, childhood, so I have a lot of uh, uh, nice memories. Um, most most of them are, are nice memories due to the efforts of of my parents, and uh, also because my my mother worked in uh, in exports of uh, uh, clothing, so a mm -hmm. lot of uh, uh, clothes were produced in uh, Romania. She was able to travel back then. Mm -hmm. So um, I had very early access to the MTV culture. 
so the MTV culture was uh, was uh, let's say a uh, 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 a very important factor in uh, in shaping uh, um, let's say my my uh, my youth. Okay. Uh, and uh, you wanted your uh, MTV, and you got your MTV. Sorry. You wanted, you know, the the expression "I want my MTV." You wanted your MTV, and you got your MTV. Yes, but we didn't have access to MTV, so I had the videotapes, which were recorded uh, by friends. But I had access to the uh, the the newest uh, songs, like uh, one uh, one one week after they uh, were broadcasted live. Uh, and that's, that's uh, my yes and and my first job i was a radio dj at 17 years old so i started to to work at 17 years old mm. uh, that one was my my salary and i did um, a show about hip hop music in romania and i was one of the guys who launched uh, hip hop in uh, in romania i did it for about wow. uh, 3 or 4 years I went to a, a very popular high school in uh, Bucharest called uh, Georgia Lazar. Uh, and I did that after reading a book which was uh, uh, written many years ago about the experiences uh, of uh, the, the writer in, in that high school. It, it was a very nice high school. Okay. And from from um, from um, uh, let's say from uh, uh, the first uh, years of school and uh, from high school, mm -hmm. the, the only thing which uh, uh, were useful for me, I would say, uh, were that, were that uh, uh, I've learned to write and speak correctly Romanian. Mm -hmm which is not a common thing today. I don't know why, because uh, it's uh, at, at least basics. A everybody should uh, write. Are, are you saying among English. Romanians, it's not common to speak and write yeah. the meaning correctly? Yeah, I hear you especially, correctly? Uh, sometimes if you look at Facebook, people are posting some things and you had the impression that uh, they, they can't use uh, uh, or, um, uh, all the letters from the keyboard, you know? But wow. sometimes uh, and um, sometimes and people say but, 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 this is how these people are are talking. I I, I don't know why it's that because um, uh, Romanians are are smart and um, it, it, it's okay. So so fast forward. You, you so you're a DJ. You go to the school. It's a good school. You get your education and. Yes, and after that, I went to the Academy of Economic Studies. I did uh, international uh, relationships, and um, after that, uh, w when I had uh, w when I was eighteen years old, I had three objectives. One of them is to get my driver's license. The second one to open a company, sure. and the third one to to go to London for a week to visit uh, BBC. Wow. Okay. And this is uh, that's yeah, ambitious, crazy. It, it, yeah, yeah. It was very nice because they sent me to to uh, to uh, make um, a chronicle about a the concert. They even paid me, so it was very nice for a guy at eighteen years old. Yes. And after that, I started to to uh, to um, to be a, a business person, and um, uh, for many years. Uh, selling marketing services was let's say my my bread and butter mm -hmm. and these remained uh the bread and butter for the whole period and i had some also some uh, I, I i i i couldn't say uh, deviations i could say mostly like uh, second secondary things to look at okay. and for uh, a certain period um, I sold uh, video games in Romania, imported uh, from uh, uh, US, from uh, UK, from all over the world. Nice. I sold them in uh, in hypermarkets, and I went to all the trade shows like uh, 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 ECTS. I believe it, it was in London for so some years. I also went to states, and uh, after that, at a certain moment, I said. Uh, um, I feel the urge to do an MBA. 
because I said this is something that is missing. I will, without an MBA, I will, will not be able to do this, to do that. And um, uh, I've, uh, I've self-financed an MBA, and I had an MBA degree from uh, uh, Knam Paris. So, uh, so sorry, finished... and just for those who are unfamiliar, you went to a graduate school in Paris for your MBA. From uh, yes, you... it it was the the MBA was done uh, uh, partially in Romania. The degree is from uh, Knam Paris. That's amazing. Uh, yes, and also in the same time, I was pitched by a university in uh, in. Uh, 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 in the Netherlands to do uh, an executive MBA uh, uh, at uh, their uh, uh, very nice location in Buren. Buren is like... That, oh, the Netherlands, Netherlands is beautiful. From Amsterdam. Yes, yes. And uh, it was a very, very nice experience. And it was a marketing professor at that school, which you could... You could stay for three days listening to him. He didn't have any slides, but it was uh, it, it was a pure uh, uh, genius. Mm -hmm. So uh, and imagine a, a marketing professor at uh, sixty two years old coming from Germany on a Harley Davidson to to teach. Uh, uh, marketing to MBA students. It was it sounds like my hero. So, so just to be clear, the the topic you studied at graduate school or at, in university was marketing. Yes. Um. It, it did you have a focus? The, the, not necessarily. Uh, marketing was uh, a a part of it. Okay. But uh, um, I I told you in our previous discussion because it's, it's like everybody has a story you know so yes. for me uh even that i i was like an entrepreneur you know and uh, uh, i was working with clients for a while i didn't have a lot of financial education back then so i didn't know how to invest how to uh work with with money mm -hmm. uh, properly the moment so after the moment actually uh uh, I received this uh, uh, MBA diploma, which is somewhere in in my office, but was never really used. You know, so n nobody said, "Okay, because you have that degree, I will give you this or something like that." I had the worst of the worst possible uh, periods in my business, in like in in everything, and it was a, a specific period right before Christmas. Which was like, uh, if 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 you see the movie, um, uh, if you saw the movie Pursuit uh, of Happiness, we talked about it. Exactly, it was with, something with like that. Yeah, similar like that. Uh, it it was like I I don't know if, if I uh, I I shared this one uh, once to a, to a conference, you know. So I said I self financed my MBA, but uh, to to get over that Christmas, um, I sold like a gold chain I found somewhere in my house <laughs> to oh, wow. a pawn shop. But and and that was my turning point for me when I said to myself, Adrian, you need to learn some other things. And that one was my moment when I started my personal development journey. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, I need to. I need to to put some some dots together, and right around that time, I was going to an internet marketing conference in in London to um, uh, learn the newest strategy uh, strategies about online marketing, about um, uh, how to sell digital products, mm -hmm. and I was surprised that everybody from the speakers. Most of their presentations were about the relationship between conscious mind to subconscious mind, how to reprogram your subconscious mind, how to do this, how to do that, how to change your mindset. So I said, I come here to learn about these strategies and everything I heard I hear is about reprogram your subconscious mind. So back then I said, okay, I need to start working on that. And somehow the first resource I was able to to access was the landmark education, 
which uh, is uh, uh, a brilliant uh, uh, American. Uh, but but sorry, where, where did you do landmark? In uh, in, uh, in in Romania. Nice. Um, okay, very good. Yes, yes. Uh, um, uh, it was like a, a a lady who passed who passed by, unfortunately, Connie Larkin. She brought landmark education to Romania, so I did like the whole curriculum back then, even a course about uh, relationship with money. Mm -hmm. After that, I did a photo reading course with with her, Super. and I've started to study Anthony Robbins, uh, Robert Kiyosaki, and everyone else. In two thousand fourteen, something very interesting happened. I was at the Unleash the Power with in London with Anthony. Sorry, you were what? Course, Say again? Is uh, Unleash the Power Within. Oh, okay, Tony Robbins. Robbins. Sure. Yes, yeah, Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins remained my uh, favorite coach, and I was able to to uh, 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 walk on fire, and one of the most interesting shifts happening back, th back then, uh, going back to my uh, youth. So I had about 11 years of very... Uh, um, very bad allergic asthma. Okay. So I was an asthmatic when I was like between um, seven years old and around 18 years old. And after that, for a few years, uh, even I was uh, using that uh, spray, you know. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and uh, at a certain moment when, when I started to look at the... Uh, personal development, I, I said, uh, I don't want to be all my life, all my life dependent on that spray, right? And um, after I went to unleash the power within, somehow in my mind, I, I heard about this thing, ah, you know, that 2% of the people, uh, they control 98% of everything, money, assets, companies, things like that. So I said, I, I want to be part of this. Uh, you want to be part of the 2%. <laughs> I want to be part of the 2%. But was right after that period, which was dark like crazy. And what Adrian thought about it, man, how can I approach this 2%? And mm -hmm. around that time, I heard another statistic that uh, only 1% of the people have ever run a marathon. I, I think that number may even be high. The number actually less than 1%. because no, uh, the, yes, the the number is actually zero point seven seventeen percent. This that's, is the that, number. That right sounds now. more like it. Yes, but back then this was the thing uh, I I heard about. So I said, man, I want to run a marathon, but I was like, uh, um, still I was like uh, a guy who had asthma was not able to run more than one kilometer. Okay. But after I walked on the fire, you know, uh, at uh, Unleash the Power Within, in one year, I was able to run my first marathon. I'm a slow runner. Still, I'm, I'm a slow runner now. Mm -hmm. But um, um, I, I did few marathons, you know, like with the medal, with everything. It's, it's important to be a finisher at the end of the day, right? Yes. So, uh, and... And uh, also back then, at the same moment, because th this was, let's say, a very healthy habit I started like uh, uh, 10 years ago. So long distance, which works for me very well for if I want to, I don't know, to, uh, to, to clean my mind, if I want to, uh, uh, to uh, escape from negative thinking, from any bad thoughts, bad states, you know, if I run three, four kilometers at least, I'm very, uh, how to say, like going to a shrink, you know. I, I, I understand completely. For, for me, it's lifting heavy weights, but everyone, people have different things, but I, I, I get it completely. It's, it's, and, it's and, better than Adderall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's very good. And, um, uh, Back then, also, I have adopted another uh, an, another habit, mm -hmm. which I will explain a little bit. Also, I've learned from Tony Robbins that we have like, uh, uh, as people, we have like uh, six uh, basic needs, and one of the need 
one of the needs is the need for contribution, you know, and yes. the wealthy people, they are contributing, they are doing this, they are doing that, you know, to for various do we, reasons. Do, 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 we, do me a favor, because I, I, I want to, this is gold, but I want to get to the other gold. Re, re, summarize this part, because I want to get to your blockchain crypto journey, and I want to get to yeah, your... Yeah, just what, one idea. It will take only one minute. Then, My then, problem is that I, I could speak for days. and we you, would... you have the time. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Just Go ahead. to, just to um, how I've started to, to uh, contribute, right? You know that uh, I've started to donate blood okay. because b because uh, um, uh, like uh, in March I did my twenty fifth donation. Wow, nice, good job! And it's it's like we we as men we can donate four times a year, right? So in about uh, ten it? years, I yeah 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 we we can donate four times a year. I believe women can donate five. I I'm I'm not sure if this statistics are the same all over the world mm -hmm. but uh, um, uh, I only donated in Romania until now and I was a little bit lazy so I did about two and something every year okay so this year in 2024 I said every quarter I need to donate once you know to be to be easy to to uh, to uh, to be accountable and uh, because um, uh, when people are in need, you know, uh, of uh, blood for transfusions, or I don't know, uh, the blood uh, um, was not replicated, at least officially in the labs. So the the blood can only come from donations. Okay. And for every donation, you as a human being, you can save up to three lives, right? Oh, wow. One donation. For you as a donor is potentially considered like is the fountain of youth. So it helps a lot of the body, yes. you know, because the body, uh, when you do a, a blood donation, it eliminates uh, uh, with the blood, uh, all, all the things which should be eliminated from the body. And of course, uh, there is a process for this blood to be prepared for uh, for uh, transfusion, how to say? So it's it's very benef beneficial for the donor also. So I'm 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 closing <laughs> this this part. But these were like some uh, uh, with with these things. I had a lot of uh, uh, epiphanies, right? And um, in um, in uh, 2013. Uh, I also came back to to uh, uh, my uh, musician and, and DJ journey, which uh, uh, became uh, my cocaine. You know, <laughs> so music music is my uh, is my cocaine. So uh, I have uh, uh, besides what I'm doing in uh, marketing in business, I have this uh, uh, musical side, which. Um, uh, is developing pretty well. How I uh, started my my blockchain journey, um, I I I was a freelancer on uh, Upwork uh, okay. in uh, wow. late 2016, uh, beginning of 2017. It, it was a way to 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 get clients, you know, uh, for usually for meeting uh, new people, for doing uh, other things. So. To, to getting out of the the comfort zone, right? Um, I like very much the platform, and I received uh, an inquiry from uh, an American project saying that they need help to expand into Europe. Okay, and uh, um, we had a call. I was uh, mesmerized by uh, what I heard there. The project uh, still exists today. Mm -hmm. It's called CloudCoin. It was ahead of its time. Nice. Still, it's ahead of its time because it uh, uh, it was a post blockchain technology. You know, post blockchain technology. Post blockchain technology. Yes, I, 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 will, I will have them on the show separately to explain them what that means. But stay on, stay on your journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just. So uh, that one uh, was my my first project. I've started to work. Uh, on as CMO, 
Mm. And we did a lot of uh, a lot of uh, things. Basically, this blockchain technology is called Radar, is um, uh, a patent tech technology in the in the US, and basically this uh, coin doesn't have a, a blockchain. You know, so the the transactions are not registered on on a public ledger. Very scalable. And that, and, and that, that's supposed and, to be a good thing. Um, it's 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 different than uh, all the all the all the others. So it's it's like a privacy. It's like a privacy coin. I I don't want to 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 comment uh, uh, if it's good or not because we could speak for hours only. Okay, only fine. About so you work with these it's, guys. You market different. for them. What what do you exactly? Do? Sorry. So you you connect with the you're on Upwork. You hear about this project. You get excited about it. You start working for them. You market for them. Yes. Yes, we we did everything like from scratch. There was only like a very 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 basic white paper. It wasn't uh, any community. It wasn't any website. Absolutely nothing. So we built anything from from scratch, and o over time, <laughs> this this became like uh, one one of my abilities to build something from nothing. <laughs> you know so. Because many people say, ah, if you want to do this project, we need first to get investors to, be, to do this, to do that. But I always say, start to move with what you have at mm -hmm. your uh, disposal. Like you have uh, infrastructure for websites, you have, um, you, you can create a token, you can do this. You can, basically, you can do a lot of things where uh, the know-how is more important than the money you have at your disposal, right? Just yeah. to be open, open to do that. And uh, back then, uh, um, um, it, it was in 2018, uh, I wrote for Startup Grind an article mm -hmm. about the ideal user persona. Idea of a user persona. <laughs> Okay. Yes, ideal your user persona. Actually, when you create a project, especially now when there is the the, the marketplace is very crowded. Anyway, a, a small percentage of the people, let's say, know about blockchain, right? Which is I don't know, two percent, three percent, four percent. It doesn't matter. Uh, but if we look around, we being part of this industry, we see so many projects, right? We go to events. We go to conferences. We see so many projects. We go to Coin Market Cap, to Coin Gecko, and mm -hmm. it's launching, 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 launching. And uh, some people say, "Ah, oh, we have a DeFi project. We do staking. We do farming. We have this. We have we, we do that." But our project is for everybody. You know, this is the biggest lie. When you develop something to uh, uh, find and dominate your niche you need to know from the start or to design from the start which is your ideal user persona or ideal user personas okay right and this could be a guy or a girl or a, how to say a non-binary right um looking at the the new uh, terms or a couple or multiple profiles you can give them names and you have to understand okay what types of show i there are they looking at uh what types of uh, um, uh, shops they go they go to from time to time what do they eat mm -hmm. um what kind of music they listen what what types of uh, uh, clothing they use and so on you know and when you drill down, and this is not only about blockchain, it's about like any brand, right? But let's let's uh, uh, drill down the discussion about blockchain, right? About uh, tokens, about coins, about uh, the technology in this space. Once you you understand or you design very well your ideal buyer persona, ideal user persona, right? <clears throat> you will know most of the discussions happening in the mind of that person. You will know the slang, okay, you will know the triggers, you will know 
sometimes as a marketer, you will know more about that target group than people know about themselves, right? And the the uh, 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 everything I, I, you are I, creating. So uh, I I get that concept. Yes, yeah, so you're modeling out your users. Tell me how that is. How tell me how that is specific to blockchain and crypto projects. What what does that look What does that look like? And how can the project use that information? So when you when you uh, um, when you understand your audience, because it's about understanding the audience or building an audience. You know, it depending because when, when you are doing something new in the market, you create something new, right? Okay. Um, so when you know the triggers and what happens in the mind of your ideal user persona, you use this in communication. And when people are scrolling, let's say Facebook or are scrolling uh, Telegram or, or uh, when they are scrolling, of course, in, in Telegram, no, you, you don't have access to the groups. But let's say when you are uh, scrolling uh, articles or something like that, you will see because we don't read everything. We read, let's say, uh, a few words. You will see um, the, the picture, the images. You will see the words that will trigger something in you, okay. which I'll, will make I'll, you I'll, stop I'll, from scrolling. I feel like there's gold here. I feel like there's gold here, but I want to dig for it. Give me a practical, real life example how a blockchain or crypto project can use the model of the audience to capture attention. Not not hypothetical, but like one that actually happened. The the low hanging fruit here. Mm -hmm. uh, we 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 can talk about uh, uh, meme tokens. Okay, good. You know. Meme tokens, let's say some people love dogs, right? Some people love monkeys, some people love cats, right? A, a project, it, it, it's just a, a hypothetical example because we, we can go into more serious things, you know, but meme culture and meme tokens are important. Many people say, oh, I don't want to hear about that. Yes, but look at how much time we spend on TikTok looking at stupid things, right? the the um, how to say the, the 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 more stupid the video the more views right so the, the, there is a cultural thing here which is uh, um, revealed in the in the meme industry so so let's say if if um, if I I'm a cat lover right so uh, I will see a message saying that this project wants to issue a token to i'm just making up right now this project wants to uh, issue a token to uh, to build uh, a safe uh, house for um, the 300 cats running around in, in new york we want to feed them we want to take care of them and to find them some uh, some um, uh, some good families to to live with so automatically, I'm a cat lover. I'm seeing a cause. I'm I'm clicking and I'm hooked. And they say, okay, join our Telegram, join our Discord. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I I will uh, I will be part of. So I'm coming like from from the internet, right? And I enter to these uh, private communities where what happens. I'm uh, indoctrinated with these ideas, you know, so indoctrination has a negative connotation, right? When you say, sure. but yes, um, in the personal development world, I've uh, learned something which I, I never heard anything about uh, in my high school, in my university, uh, and not even uh, during my uh, MBA is that how the human mind works in every moment and this is uh, documented you can uh, you can search uh, on the internet look for reticular activation system and look for uh, uh, how many brands can fit in uh, your mind at one moment right and you will find out that only seven brands can uh, 
can be kept in your mind at a certain moment, right? That's why it is said, for example, um, even if, let's say, if you like Mercedes, if you don't like BMW, BMW is preparing everyone to become a customer sometime because ev everyone knows a little bit about, right? So, so in the... uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to keep you on track. The, the, you you yeah. find the cat lover, you bring yes. them into the private community, you're yes. indoctrinating them in what sense? Exactly. In what sense are you indoctrinating them? So basically, for let's say for the meme tokens, that uh, token will become the dominant brand in your mind. So you will not able to see anything else. Okay. This is the idea. It will it. become okay, one so they, of they the seven brands. Takes their brain space and completely exactly. fills it up with this product. Exactly. That token will find a space in your brain which will not be replaced by anything else on that subject if their message is reinforced, right? That's why you see so many people being hooked to uh, Floki, to SHIB, to others. Mm -hmm. Somehow it's the same if we look at layer ones, you know, some people uh, love Ethereum, some people love Solana for the same reasons. You know, they've communicated some ideas to them. Uh, they became the dominant uh, brand uh, in their minds. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, people are putting money, are putting uh, um, uh, coins in uh, staking. Uh, some of them are only buying tokens on projects from these networks, you know. And, oh, yeah. Uh, so how... How does the cat meme coin establish market dominance in someone's head? What 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 do, what do you do with them so that they can establish that position? Uh, first is the is the rapport, you know. So, but with with communication, you build you build the rapport, and okay. this is built actually because if you know your market very well you bring into discussion the subjects which are the most important for your audience because you know that right you even you can say uh um uh, let's say you can you can post on telegram have you seen uh, pets movie for mm -hmm. example which is a fantastic uh, movie um um, what do you think about the relationships between uh, that cat and that dog in the movie? And you will see people commenting hundreds. Okay, so, you, market so you, you're, you're establishing relevancy. Of... It sounds like relevancy. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. And community. And so also... or and there's relevancy. All right. Good. I mean, yes. I'm, I'm trying and, to get usable information, and this is good. Okay. So you and, and, go go ahead. And and, and after that you uh, uh by design not necessarily by default um you uh, have the possibility to use in an ethical way ideally two of the most important triggers one of them is um, uh, reciprocity and the other mm -hmm. is polarity reciprocity How, and yes how do you how do you uh, build uh, reciprocity? Hey, what was the second one? Reciprocity and as po polarity. I will, polarity. I will explain uh, immediately both of them. Okay. So reciprocity is the uh, the most powerful um, trigger for mm -hmm. the human mind, and usually how how it's done. If a project uh, is educating uh the community giving 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 a lot of value right not just asking uh, buy uh, this token buy this nft if they start to educate their community teaching them useful things mm -hmm. on that specific niche somehow in the subconscious mind of the people from the community uh, uh is a desire to do something back, to give something back, right? 
Yes. And usually this is uh, is manifesting by purchasing, by holding, by telling other people about it, right? Think about okay. from the real life. It's, it's like a, um, a do-it-yourself store, you know? You are on two do-it-yourself stores mailing list. One of them is only sending offers, buy this, buy that. Mm -hmm. And the other is teaching you how to, I don't know, how to renovate your kitchen, how to do this, how to do that. And you also put an offer from time to time there. From the second one, at a certain moment, you may forget about it because we had like 700, 700 uh, marketing messages a day trying to sell us something, by, but that store giving you so much value, that one will find a space in your mind. That one will create reciprocity with you and you will be more uh, eager to buy from this one than from the other one. Even if sometimes this one will not have the best prices, but overall will start with, with the best uh, with, with the experience. And the polarity mm -hmm. is like when you throw in the market an idea which will split the market in two. People okay. loving the idea and people hating the idea. So there will be so much conversation around that which will generate sales like crazy because people are talking about it, right? When you say that, that I, I don't know, like uh, um, just well, to give you an example. kind of have polarity between Bitcoin and Ethereum in a way. Exactly. So. Exactly. It's, um, or I would say between Ethereum and Sol Solana. This is okay, the sure. best polarity right now, you know? Yeah. People, some people say, oh, Ethereum, you know, some people say, oh, Solana is, but it, it keeps them uh, uh, in your face, right? This is the most important. And the, the brands, the brands, the companies, they don't have to pay anything for that. They just have to throw ideas in the market. Like, ah, uh, oh, Ethereum will die because uh, Solana does this. Ah, oh, look, there is congestion on Solana because uh, Ethereum did uh, that with, I don't know what, uh, what projects. And this is polarity. People are talking about it. These uh, brands, coins are in your face, right? So look at the position in uh, in uh, in coin market cap and in coin gecko. Of course, uh, among other things. But these controversies sometimes are created by design. They, they don't just happen. Yes, even for. Uh, Look at, uh, this is the best example right now, uh, uh, Kenya West and his uh, new wife. She's almost naked, right? But all the all the tabloids are uh, speaking about her, speaking about them. And what's happening? She, uh, she uh, self-published an album which sold like crazy, like crazy, like crazy. He also did a Super Bowl ad, a uh, film with iPhone, and he had a huge return on investment, right? Mm -hmm. Also, he's selling his shoes without the support from Adidas. Why? Because uh, they are on top of your mind everywhere. It's the same thing uh, used by uh, the Kardashian family, right? So all the time yeah. there well, is he, a he, I, I, about my... No, from his experience with Kim. Actually, you know, that, that's kind of true because Kim Kardashian is a polarizing figure. So whether you like her or whether you don't like her, she is. A, I mean, we are talking about her right now on a crypto show. Exactly, it's like uh, Miss, Miss, Mr. Donald uh, Trump. I'm a, I'm a big uh, admirer of uh, of uh, Donald Trump because also she doesn't have any problem if people are are doing like a, 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 a mock up of me, a balloon or something. It doesn't matter. This is marketing. Well, or so Richard Branson, who is my favorite entrepreneur this polarity so virgin is always there he's always there you know all right so l l let me ask you we have we have about five minutes left i just want to make sure we we get your essence so you, you you will come you will work with your projects your blockchain and crypto projects you'll establish sort of the brain presence in the the potential customers you'll get them indoctrinated you'll establish reciprocity you'll attempt to go for polarity so that they have an emotional reaction 
what where do projects fail like what, what do they need to watch out for most of the most of the projects fail because they they don't have uh, uh, a sustainable business attached to it sure because when you when you uh, what happens is is it's fantastic that you, you brought this into discussion right so uh, what happens let's say when you have pre sales when you when you put a token on an exchange um uh, sometimes there is very big selling pressure at the beginning right people yes. uh the, the users they they try to sell some of them they they uh, they trade but uh in in just a token business um uh the exchanges let's say will make money from the transactions from the listing fees the market makers from uh, uh doing their work but at, at the end uh, of a certain period, that token will die because there will not be uh, interest, will not remain on top of the mind for the audience, right? So first is a communication thing because you forget about it because others will come, so many projects, right? Yes. Uh, but also because they don't have a, a business model attached to it which will be an, an income generator, right? Which could sustain the project both in bull markets, but also in bear markets. When so, uh, there are tokens... On that note, are meme coins doomed to fail? If you look at, uh, uh, if you look at many, many of them, of course, there are some copycats mm -hmm. only, do, only having a... Um, uh, only being done for quick bucks mm -hmm. so uh, um, uh, our viewers they they have to to look at and perform their own due diligence right mm -hmm. so you need to a little bit of responsibility and it's a learning curve sure. i don't think that the meme culture will disappear the meme culture will stay there will evolve um some of the current meme projects will become huge powerhouses huge companies like happened really? with uh, with Loki and others because they sustain uh, a, a human need for entertainment right because that's a lot of entertainment attached to it i'm not talking about financial gains i'm not talking about uh, other things and and one important element in any marketing message and the meme coins are doing it very well when you have a piece of content for your, if it's not, let's say, specialized, right? Like a technical one or something like that. I'm talking about a marketing message. That marketing message to penetrate mm -hmm. has to be understood also by the father of Bart Simpson. This is, this I learned from uh, my American marketer. Uh, I guess so, so Homer if Simpson. your message... Homer Simpson yes, needs to if, understand you, right? Yes. If 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 uh, uh, he can't understand what you are putting there, you have a problem. I'm not talking here about uh, very uh, specialized things, right? But um, in, how I, I've learned marketing over time is that you connect marketing to sales. You market, you sure. sell. If you are just doing marketing for the sake of marketing, you are not a business person. You can be very good as a professor of marketing, right? Mm -hmm. But I I only believe in uh, applied knowledge, right? So you do this, you sell, you eat, you don't sell, you don't eat, something like that. So very... the, the point of marketing is sales. Exactly. So you need to connect marketing to sales. And also, you you uh, you need to know your audience, the critical mass of users, and the messages to be designed for them, not for everybody. This is not for everybody, right? So we need to to drill down um, uh, this thing because th this is the essence, right? If you have this knowledge, you don't need anything else. Oh, I think I. Why are you me? Yeah, come on, you're me. 
Da, un minut vin, să termin e, e un minut! Ce s-a întâmplat? Nu, nu vede nimic! Du-te la Elin, că vin în 5 minute, te rog. We have to cut this, it's my, my three years old. Okay, that, that, that's too cute. Okay, I'm gonna let you know, because you are, you are a good dad. Go pay attention to your daughter. All right, but it was great having you on the show. I'll, I'll put your information. I'll put your information in the show notes, hey, folks. If you want to have a successful blockchain or crypto project, talk to our good dad right here. Yes. <laughs> it's it's like this. Is, this is the the secret sauce, right? Well, they know very well about my cause and my everything. But sometimes when there is a little this moment, crisis moment. Uh, Yeah, it is good. It's yeah. cute. All right, I'm gonna stop the recording. Hold on. Thanks, Adrian.